The Little Prince, Chapter One. I was six years old when I spotted a magnificent picture in a book about an ancient forest. The picture showed a boa constrictor in the act of swallowing a wild beast. This is what it looked like. It said in the book, "A boa constrictor swallows its prey whole without chewing it. After this, it is unable to move and sleeps through the next six months. This is needed for digestion." I thought deeply about the experiences of the forest. Then, with care and a colored pencil, I succeeded in making my first drawing. Drawing number one looked like this. I showed my fine work to the grown-ups and asked if the drawing scared them. Scared? Why, it is only a hat. But it was not a hat. It was very clearly a boa constrictor digesting an elephant, but the grown-ups need explanations for everything. So I made another drawing showing the elephant inside the boa constrictor. Drawing number two looked like this. This time, the grown-ups advised me to put away my representations of the boa constrictor, be it from the inside or the outside, and instead spend my time learning geography, history, arithmetic, and grammar. That is why, at six years of age, I gave up a promising career as an artist, disappointed by the failure of drawing number one and drawing number two. Grown-ups find it hard to understand anything on their own, and it is tiring for children to always have to explain things to them. Hence, I chose a different occupation and learned to fly airplanes. I flew all over the world and found that geography was very useful to me. I can easily distinguish China from Arizona. And such knowledge is important if you get lost in the dark. Through the years, I have encountered many people of importance and spent a great deal of time among grown-ups. However, knowing them closely hasn't much improved my opinion of them. Whenever I felt I met someone sensible, I experimented by showing him or her my drawing number one. Which I always carried with me, but no matter who it was, the answer would always be, "It is a hat." There would end any talk about boa constrictors or ancient forests or the stars. I would lower myself to their level and prattle about bridges and golf, politics and neckties. Oh, how it pleased the grown-ups to have met such a logical man! Chapter Two. So I lived by myself with no one to talk to till six years ago. My plane came down in the Sahara Desert with a broken engine. Without a mechanic or any passengers, I ventured to perform the difficult repairs on my own. It was a matter of life and death. There wasn't enough drinking water to last a week. Miles away from civilization, I spent my first night on the sand, more lost than a castaway in the middle of a vast ocean. So imagine my astonishment when a strange voice woke me the next morning. It said, "Please, could you draw me a sheep?" What? Draw me a sheep? Utterly startled, I sprang up. Blinking hard, I surveyed the area around myself cautiously. There stood an incredibly small person, studying me intently. This is the best portrait I could manage from memory, but the actual person was far more fascinating. The fault is not mine. Discouraged from becoming a painter when I was six years old, I only know how to draw boas from the inside and from the outside.
Now this sudden vision made my eyes fall out of my head in disbelief. As you are aware, I had crash landed in the desert many miles from any habitation. Yet this fellow seemed neither weary nor asche. He wasn't even fainting from hunger or thirst or fear. He did not look like a child lost in the middle of the desert, far away from any living thing. When I finally found I could speak, I asked him, "What are you doing here?" Please, could you draw me a sheep? He repeated slowly, with care, as if this was a matter of great importance. So compelling was the situation that I could not disobey, even though I was far removed from civilization and worried for my life. I took out of my pocket a sheet of paper and my fountain pen. Then it struck me that my studies had been centered around geography, history, arithmetic, and grammar, and I told the little man, with some irritation, that I did not know how to draw. He answered, "No matter, draw me a sheep." But I had no experience of drawing a sheep, so I drew for him the thing I so frequently drew—the boa constrictor from the outside. And I was surprised to hear, "No, no, no! I do not want a boa constrictor with an elephant in its stomach. A boa constrictor is very dangerous, and an elephant too bulky." Everything very small where I come from. A sheep will be more suitable. Draw me a sheep. So I made this drawing. He looked at it carefully and said, "This won't do. The sheep looks ill. Draw me another." I made another drawing. My friend smiled kindly. "See for yourself," he said. "It is a ram with horns, not a sheep." So I made a third drawing. It looks ancient," he exclaimed. "I want a sheep that will live for a very long time." I was exhausted and impatient to start working on the crippled engine, so I quickly drew this. "Your sheep is inside this box," I explained. I was pleasantly surprised to see his face light up. That is just what I wanted. Do you think this sheep will need plenty of grass? Why? Because my world is very small. Of course, there will be enough grass. I said. It is a tiny sheep. He bent over the drawing and looked closely. Not too tiny. Oh, look! He has gone to sleep. And that is how I first met the little prince. Chapter three. It was a long time before I could learn anything about the world he came from. The little prince asked me question after question, but never seemed to hear mine. It was from carelessly dropped words that I gradually constructed the tale. When he noticed my plane for the first time, for instance, no, I shall not draw it. It is too complicated. He asked me, "What is that thing? That is not a thing. It can fly. It is a plane. It is my airplane." I was quite proud to have him know that I was a pilot and could fly the plane. He cried out, "Oh my! So you dropped out of the sky?" Yes, I answered humbly. That is so funny, and the little prince broke into a ringing laugh, which displeased me very much. I expect others to take my problems seriously. Then he said, "So you have come from the sky too? From which planet?" At that instant, I realized he was giving me an important hint about himself, and I said. You're from a different planet, aren't you? He did not respond. Gazing steadily at my plane, he remarked, "In that thing, you couldn't have come from very far away." Then, for what seemed like a long time, he stood lost in thought. Eventually, he took my sheep out of his pocket and looked at it closely. As you can imagine.
I was intrigued when he suggested he was from another planet, so I tried to find out more. Where are you from? What is this small place you speak of? Where are you going to take my sheep? He thought for a while and answered, "It is good that he has the box. At night he can use it as his house." Quite right. And if you behave, I can give you a rope to tie him with during the day, and also a post to which he can be tied. The little prince was aghast. Tie him? Why would we do such a strange thing? But if you don't, I said, will he not wander off and get lost? My little friend burst out laughing again. But where do you think he would go? Anywhere, I suppose. As his nose guides him, he answered solemnly, "It doesn't matter. In my world, everything is really small." And then, with a touch of sadness, the little prince added, "Letting his nose guide him will not get him very far."